The Seven Kingdoms needs a ruler loved by millions with a powerful army and the right family name. Good luck finding him. Who said anything about him? I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. The Prime Minister talks NHI funding. The latest on government's BEC reform efforts plus the QC comets paint the galaxy green. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonnie Tude and NV12 starts now. Tonight, as public debate on government's proposed national health insurance plan heats up, Prime Minister Perry Christie says they still haven't decided how NHI will be rolled out or how it will be funded. Christie says he's amazed by discussions surrounding NHI, including talks of layoffs and increased poverty. However, he made it clear government would not make foolish decisions. Kyle Joaquin reports. Prime Minister Christie said he is amazed at the debate surrounding NHI. He said at the moment, the government is considering all of the recommendations made by those consultants. And he said once they're done, they will make a formal announcement as to how NHI will be rolled out and exactly how much it will cost. Christie said since the document prepared by Costa Rican consultant Sandy Jess International was leaked to the Nassau Guardian, people have been drawing their own conclusions as to how much national health insurance will cost. But he said the government at all times reserves the right to determine the rate of NHI's rollout phases. And so whatever cost or tax, whatever people call it, is entirely in the hands of the government. Christie added that the government he believes is moving the country upward will not make foolish decisions to plunge the country into another recession. The debate will be enjoined by the government at some stage. But right now we are putting in place all of the analyses that we need to be able to say to the Bahamian public, this is how the final product will look like. This is what it will cost, and this is how we intend to roll it out so it will have minimal, if any, negative impacts. In the report, it was revealed that NHI implementation would cost taxpayers between $362 million for a basic benefits package and $633 million annually for an expended benefits package. The report also proposed three revenue scenarios to pay for the tax scheme. While he would not confirm which avenue the government is considering, Christie said they still have plans to implement NHI in January of next year. Christie said truth is the government is still getting advice on how NHI should be developed. He said the next step for the government is to meet with the consultants. The Prime Minister and his government will sit in the final analysis, listen to the consultants, and then make a determination on how NHI should be rolled out in our country. It requires a lot of reconfiguration. A lot of the hospital beds must be reconfigured into smaller wards. It requires a new approach to, to hospital and tertiary care in Grand Bahama. These are all matters of part and parcel. And in the final analysis, we have retained some of the, the world's leading accountants who are now examining this in terms of its cost, in terms of its cost effectiveness, in terms of rolling out, in terms of how it is done. All of that is taking place now. Christie patted himself on the back for getting the government to introduce value-added tax at a rate of 7.5% when it was initially set at 15%. Then there's the comment made by Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller that he fears the implementation of NHI could cause mass layoffs in the health insurance industry. Here's Christie's response to that. Leslie Miller has been in a government before. Leslie Miller himself ought to know. Governments don't do stupid things. That the government has the responsibility of managing the economy and managing the economy in the interest of people who work in the economy and people who work for insurance companies. At the end of the day, the full idea is we try to have an accommodation of what we're doing, not just with doctors, but with insurance companies and with the Bahamian people. Christie said if Miller was interested in commenting the proper way, he would have consulted with him first before speaking out on it in the media. Reporting for MB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. 
Opposition leader and former Minister of Health Dr. Hubert Minnis also weighed in on that NHI report today, specifically the revelation that patients on PMH public wards are more than five times as likely to die than those on private wards. Dana Smith has that angle. With respect to the five times death rate on the public wards as opposed to the private ward, that is very interesting. It's very interesting. We have some of the best healthcare personnel um, um, in this part of the hemisphere. They are well trained. They were trained and um, they were top in their class, be it in the US, UK, other parts of Europe, etc. They were top of their class. Praising the medical staff at PMH, Minnis said the marked difference in mortality rates when it comes to private and public wards is not indicative of a difference in care standards. Rather, he attributed the disparity to a difference in the type of patients. Minnis said those in private wards tend to have insurance and visit their doctors regularly, while those in public wards don't. This means, he explained, private patients are in better health and any potential fatal diseases could be diagnosed earlier. Public ward patients, he said, usually do not go to the doctor until it's too late. So as a result of that, the patient on the private ward would have come, would have presented themselves with an early disease pattern, which meant they were at a stage where they could have been treated and cured. So you would have expect to find a low mortality and morbidity there. On the, pri on the public ward, on the other hand, because they would have not seen and had their annual physical, by the time they present themselves to the emergency room or the hospital, they are, for example, say three or four cancer, which is well advanced. And therefore, one would expect the morbidity and mortality to be higher in that group. Minnis also responded to the report's finding the New Providence ambulance response times are too long. Minnis said during his tenure as Minister of Health, he recognized it was a problem and a plan was formed to station ambulances at different locations around New Providence in a bid to reduce the wait. What that would have done, any injury or problems in the West, the ambulance could have been dispatched from the West and dealt with it appropriately. The time the, the, the interval would have been a lot shorter. We had already drafted um, preliminary plans to move the ambulance, um, to, to um, mobilize the ambulance in these various different locations. Santa Jess found the average response time for emergency transport in New Providence is more than 30 minutes. The benchmark time frame is eight minutes. As a means to address this issue, Minnis said the PLP only has to move forward with the corrective measures formulated under the prior administration. Public Hospitals Authority Managing Director Herbert Brown said yesterday, back in 2003, the average response time was five minutes. He noted ambulances were deployed to various clinics and police stations around the island, but he said police needed their space and PHA had to look at an alternative plan. He added the PHA expects to take possession of 21 new ambulances next year. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. Prime Minister Christie says government will move rapidly to conclude a deal on the restructuring of the Bahamas Electricity Corporation. Telling reporters today the ball is in his court and he accepts that. A decision on the BEC reform process has been delayed on numerous occasions. For me, as the Prime Minister, I wanted to make absolutely sure that what we're doing is in fact the right step to take and with the right people in taking the right step, and we're nearly finished that process. Christie says he is acutely aware of the importance of finalizing this matter. We know that the island of New Providence is rapidly expanding in terms of the economy, and uh, additional buildings being built that will require additional electricity. Um, I've already announced Bahama coming on stream. If you drive past now, you see the building is being lit up slowly. Um, to the west of Bahama, there are two condominium developments we have approved, and so you, you, we know um, that we must move. The Prime Minister traveled to Washington, D.C. last month and met with United States Vice President Joe Biden on energy reform in the Caribbean. Government officials defended the many delays recently, insisting they must make the right decision. When Christie announced the decision to restructure BEC in August 2013, government proposed a timeline for reform, which would have seen private companies launch their operations by May 2014. 
Where else can you find thousands of dancing comments? Well, Queens College, of course. The 2015 BAISS champions celebrated their sweet victory today with a massive motorcade. Waving green pom-poms and placards, the QC Comets painted the town green today in celebration of their historic win at last week's BAISS track and field meet. As proud parents honked their horns, a sea of green swept down Village Road, onto Wolf Road, Nassau Street, and then downtown Nassau before heading back to Comet Country. It was a magical moment for thousands of QC students past and present who waited 25 long years to destroy St. Augustine's College's big red machine. Super, super. It was a long, long time coming. We finally got here. We're going to enjoy this. I am overjoyed. I'm excited. To come finally in 2015 to be the champion, I am so elated. I'm so happy. The Comets managed to knock off SAC by 150 points to capture their first BAISS track and field title in the school's history. And these students couldn't be happier. That's okay. Okay. The machine is break down. Ain't no more repair up and arm. No more repair up and arm. The Comets are destroyed the trap. <laughs> in your face! And you ain't winning next year. Y'all know we was coming for y'all and we get y'all. Yay, Comets, go! <laughs> Though some people have challenged QC to pull off a second victory next year, the Comets say, don't believe me, just watch. Don't believe me, just watch. Hey, 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 oh. Wait a minute. So my cup, put some nigga in it. Take a sip, sign the check. Julio, get the scratch. Right to Harlem, Hollywood, Jackson, Mississippi. If we show up, we gon' show up. Smoother than a fresh. To mark this achievement, students of the 125-year-old school released 125 green balloons into the atmosphere. And what's a celebration without a little Jonkanoo rush out? <laughs> Though these little comets are years away from a BAISS track meet, even they got in on the fun. I feel excited, amazed, I'm very surprised. So are you happy to win? Yeah. And tell us how you feel. Happy because right, so I keep Under winning too much. Queens College students say they look forward to doing it all over again next year.